Lisa, this rocket flew just 21 days ago. So uh, that timeline is getting tighter and tighter and tighter. You know, you know what exactly uh, does this signify in terms of what SpaceX and the team there has accomplished? Thank you, Emily. What we're seeing is what Justin was referring to is this becoming the business of space that we are able to launch frequently and this becomes an enabler for commercial space companies to be flying payloads. Uh, we're not only flying other people's payloads at our company, but we're flying our own uh, sensors that allow us to provide data and bring that data back from space that enables companies like the oil and gas industry, insurance industries, logistics industries that can help us with supply chain issues or you know uh, issues with even disaster responsiveness so all of this you know we watch the launches and it's exciting to see the launch but we'd love to tell the story of you know the high capability of what's flying and what that means back here on earth 53 satellites going into orbit today, and thank you for explaining just how important these satellites are. You look up in the sky on any given night and you see them, and I wonder, are we getting concerned that it's getting a little crowded up there? Uh, that, you know, are there, you know, once the space economy uh, becomes more rich, are there concerns about, about crashes and t traffic going forward? Well, I'm glad you bring that up because space traffic management is an important part of the process. And we're going to be getting better at this by improving our regulatory process. So improving the regulatory process actually makes us more competitive. And we have uh, folks working very hard to make this um, have more ease of use, right? Uh, right now, when a company flies a spacecraft or satellite, as we call these satellites, uh, you hear if there's a conjunction event or a possible collision event, you're notified of that. But the company itself isn't necessarily able to track it. They're going to be notified. So in the future, you know, we're going to have that process, I think, opening up a little more for awareness that allows us to avoid uh, these potential collisions. But is it a danger now or five years from now? I I'm not so sure it will be because our systems are all improving and the technology and awareness of where satellites are is improving all the time. So uh, space is a big place. There's a lot of space in space. Uh, so I don't find that a concern and I don't think a lot of satellite operators do necessarily today. So we just saw the entry burn process there that is now uh, shut down and complete. Uh, first stage landing burn uh, will start at about eight minutes. So we're 30 seconds away from that. Justin, so far everything seems to be going as planned. Walk us through the rest of this mission, given the point we're at right now. Yeah, it, it does seem to be going to plan. Um, so what you'll see coming up next is, as you mentioned, is the uh, the landing burn where, you know, this needs to slow down. It is still, you know, supersonic uh, vehicle at this point, and it needs to shed a lot of speed still. And to do that, it's going to, you know, fire a rocket engine again, um, vertically coming down. And then after that, you have the landing burn. Um, you know, complete where we, we've seen it. But that, you know, that's a crucial part of it. And, and you're seeing that start right there. For first uh -huh. stage landing burn happening now. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, you know, at this point, uh, what are the things that could, 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 there it is. There it is, yep. coming back there down. Um, uh, you know, at, at what point do we consider this a success? I, I I think it's a success when they get their satellites deployed uh, and going where they want to. And, you know, this, this booster is going to fly another day, maybe soon. All right. The goal, I would guess, is sooner than 21 days, because that's how long this booster took to turn around. Lisa, uh, you know, how, just how quickly uh, do you think turnaround can get if SpaceX uh, does its job right? Yeah, I think that they probably can keep shaving time off because that is what they do. They're looking for all of these incremental ways to keep lowering the turnaround time and increasing the usage and the reusability. So for this to have been six times to fly, that's phenomenal. 
phenomenal. You know, they, they have the same mindset as my company Explore, where we're looking at, you know, low cost and high capability. And they're proving this out every day by showing us that they can turn around in 21 days. You know, I visited these. They're extraordinary to see up front. Um, the, the manufacturing capability and refurbishment now. Um, they're working like clockwork and I love to see that. It just opens up the doors for commercial. Those satellites will be deployed about an hour into the flight. Uh, Justin, uh, what's next for the SpaceX team now that this booster is back on Earth? Uh, they'll be looking for another Starlink launch in short order, I think maybe next week, if I recall correctly. But, um, you know, more to build out that constellation and, and add new customers. They just added their first two airline customers in the past week uh, with uh, an airline called JSX and Hawaiian Airlines. So they're moving into aviation. They want to get into cargo ships and other uh, maritime applications. Um, so you're seeing Starlink become more of a non-residential, but also a, um, you know, commercial business product as well.